Iteration. It's all about doing the same thing over and over again. Iteration. It's all about doing the same thing over and over again. Iteration. It's all. Hey there guys, welcome back to another video, and if this is your first time here, and you want to get the best grade possible in maps, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell, lots of useful content coming your way. Right, so, you probably like the idea of picking up some easy marks, am I right? Well, meet iteration. So, it looks a lot scarier than it is, it is. Quite boring and tedious, probably some of my least favourite stuff to teach, but we're going to do it and we want to get those easy marks. So, this usually pops up in paper 3, it's usually between 3 and 5 marks, and once you know how to use your calculator, it really is quite trivial. So, in this video, I am going to explain what iteration is, how to do it, and most importantly, how to make your calculator do it with as little work as possible. In the next video, I've put together a PDF of GCSE 9 to 1 maths past paper exam questions from AQA and NXL. From this video, which is linked down below, you can download the PDF, have a go yourself, and then I'll go through the questions in that video. It's a good, it's a good time, and if you want more content like this, let me know down below in the comments with your requested topics. Okay then, first up, what is iteration apart from really boring? So, as I said at the start, it's really easy max. That's the only reason any of us are interested in this, because it's really, really boring. I hate it. So, we use it as a method to solve horrible equations of the form f of x is equal to zero. So, what I mean by horrible is equations that can't be solved using a nicer method such as factorising. Now in fact, when we use iteration, we are only finding approximations of the solutions. So what that means is, we are finding x values that make an expression equal to zero. Now because these are usually really, really decimally, we can't get exact answers but we can get approximations. Now, the more times you use iteration, the more accurate your approximation will be. So the whole thing uses what are called iterative formulas, formulae, or processes. Same things. Okay then, so these iterative formulae or processes are the things that can look something like this. Now this is a very simple example, uh, but it's a good place to start. Now, I know from past experience with my own students, when they come to these, they think they look really scary. What do these n's and n plus ones mean? Well, all they are is labels. So, for example then, with this one, we have x n and 1 is equal to 2x n add 1. So, what this means is n is your term number, if you like. Uh, so, x n just means the current term. And x n add 1 just means the next term. So, iterative processes formulae, they are like 
uh, recipes. They tell you how to work out the next term using the current term. So, what we're in fact doing is generating sequences. So, it's almost like nth term stuff. With nth terms though, you use the term number to work out the value of the term. With these, we use the current term to work out the next term. So, let's have a go at using this one to do some magic. Okay then, so we have our next term xn add 1 is equal to 2 times the current term add 1. Now, with these questions, you are usually given an initial value, which sometimes is called x0, sometimes it's called x1. Bit of a pain, but what have you all given? You're given. So, we're going to work out some more terms in this sequence. So, the first one we're going to work out is x1. So, x1 is our next term. x0 is our current term. So, x1 is equal to 2 times x0 add 1. Now, here we have x0 is 3, so this is 2 times 3 add 1. Which on a good day is 7. Now we can work out x2. x2 is equal to 2 times x1. Add 1. So that's 2 times 7, add 1. Which is 15. We can now work out x3. So that's 2 times x2, add 1. Which is 2 times 15 add 1. Which is 31. Now, okay, so you can hopefully see that with this one, if we were to just keep going with iterations, our value of x each time is just going to get bigger and bigger. When we are actually using iteration to solve equations, what happens usually is with each iteration, the value is going to get closer and closer to this solution that we are trying to find. For that to happen, there needs to be some sort of mechanism like square root or a cube root or a fraction so that each iteration gets closer to the solution. What we're going to do next on our adventure is show you how to use your calculator with this exact same example. And then just because it's nice and simple, we don't want to run before we can walk. And then what we're going to do, we're going to finish by going through one real example of using iteration to solve. Okay, so our best friend when using iteration on our calculators is this guy down here. 
the ANS button. Short for answer. What that button does is remember the value from the last time you pressed equals. So, so what this guy does for us is it allows us to put iteration formulas into our calculator using the ANS button wherever there is an XN. Okay then, hopefully you have your calculator at the ready. So, this is how we do it. Whatever your initial value is, so here minus x naught is equal to 3, put that into your calculator. So I'm going to enter 3 and then press equals. Now your calculator, unsurprisingly, is going to tell you that 3 is equal to 3. Plot twist. Okay, so without pressing anything else now, the next thing you want to put in is wherever there is an X N, you press ANS. So we now want to put in 2. You don't need to put times, so just two ants, add one, press equals, and your calculator should then display seven, so that is our value for x1. Now, we don't need to press anything else now, except equals again, and then it will give you 15. So, every time now, you just press 15, it's carrying out the iteration and finding you the next value. So, do it again, and we'll get x3 is 31, press equals again, we should get 63. And that's it, just by pressing equals on your calculator, you are carrying up iteration. So, to finish off, we're now going to go through one real example of solving an equation. Uh, I'm also going to show you where the iteration formula comes from. It's different depending on your equation. So we're going to start with an equation equal to zero, get it into an iteration formula, and do some iterating. Now let's do it. Okay then, so let's say we wanted to use iteration to try and find a solution to x squared minus x minus 10 is equal to 0. So again, remember when we say solution, that means a value of x that makes the left-hand side equal to 0. So the first thing we would need to do is get an iteration formula. Now, in exam papers, they do usually, if they want you to do this bit, they usually show you what the formula can be rearranged to, and they will say, show that this can be rearranged to this. So in general, in iteration formulas, you always need some sort of mechanism that's going to make things smaller quickly. So something like square root, or a cube root, or a fraction. And in these iteration formulas, to get them, it's a bit strange, because we make x the subject, sort of. So, we need to get an x on its own on one side, and then on the other side, we're going to have another expression involving an x. So, that sounds mental, I know. So, here because we have an x squared, that's going to allow us to get a square root 
on one side. So if we first of all go for getting the x squared on its own, we could add the x. So x squared minus 10 is equal to x. We could add 10. So x squared is equal to x add 10. And then we can square root both sides to get x is equal to the square root of x add 10. And then where the iteration formula comes from is the x on its own on the left comes the x and add 1 and the x stuck inside the stuff on the right becomes x n so that sort of thing is where iterative formulas come from there will be more examples of doing that in the PDF video up next, so we're not going to worry about it too much here. Okay, so typically that would be part A of a question in part B. They would then say using x0 is a certain value, use your iteration formula to find an approximate solution. So, with this one, I happen to know that there is a solution very close to x equals 3. So, I'm going to give us x0 is equal to 3. So, make sure you can do this. To get x1, we put in uh, 3 plus equals, and then square root, odds, add 10, and we should get x1 is root 13, uh, which is uh, 3.605551. To get x2, just press equals. So we would get x2 is 3.688570. So It is also an area where they like to ask for an annoying number of decimal places. Uh, we would then get x3 is uh, 3.699807. Okay, so that might be a typical part B. For part C, they might say, find uh, the solution to a certain number of decimal places. So to do that, just keep pressing equals until your calculator display is the same every single time. So if we go to six decimal places, we get x is equal to 
Okay, then for one final part, we might say, uh, is your value a good approximation to the solution of x squared minus x minus 10 is equal to 0? So remember, this whole game is about trying to find a value of x so that x squared minus x minus 10 is equal to 0. So what we would then do to check if our value is a good guess, we would substitute x equals uh, 3.701562 into x squared minus x minus 10 and see what we get. If it is a good um, approximation, then the answer will be very close to zero. If it's not, the answer will be far away from zero. So, when x is three point seven zero one five six two x squared minus ten x minus sorry x squared minus x minus ten is equal to now a nice little trick here as well to do this use the ants trick so put in 3.701562 and then put in ants squared minus ants minus 10 plus equals and you should get minus 7.6 with a load of decimal fun, times 10 to the minus 7. Now that means minus 0 now that is tiny, so it's very close to zero, which means, yes, it is a good approximation to the, or a, solution. And on that fun, guys, that is it for this video. Really hope it's helped. It's not a fun one, I know. Try making a video on it. Ugh. So, if you want more content like this, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget, the exam questions are available in the next video, which is linked down below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, get subscribed, share with your friends. Have a great day, because you're awesome. Take it easy, guys.